Here's a famous sonnet in the Italian form. It's called Ozymandias. Let's read it and see what we can make of it. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my work, she mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Now let's remember that an Italian or Petrarchan sonnet consists of two parts, the octave and the sestet. The octave is the first eight lines. It establishes something, a conflict, a setting, a situation, an idea, presents a question, or something. The sestet completes the octave. So what do we learn from this octave? First, the speaker has met a traveler. It is worth noting that the things described in this poem are not seen by the speaker firsthand. They are filtered through the traveler. Now, where had the traveler been? No location is given. However, we know he comes from an antique land. It would make sense to assume it might be somewhere in the Middle East, Egypt, present-day Iraq or Iran, there are two reasons we might reasonably assume that. First, the Middle East is the cradle of human civilization, the oldest civilizations we know about, developed in the Middle East. It is an antique land. Second, there are lots of deserts in the Middle East, and what this traveler describes is in a desert. And if we wanted to take time to do some biographical investigation about this poem, we would indeed learn that the poet Shelley was thinking about Egypt. So the traveler tells the poet that he saw a massive collapsed structure. Only two pieces were standing, two vast and trunkless legs of stone. Trunkless means that there was no body on these legs. However, on the ground, there were broken remnants of this statue. Among those, half sunk in the sand, was a shattered visage. A visage is a face. And even though it's shattered, the expression survives in the remnants. We know that this face was frowning. There was a wrinkled lip and a sneer of cold command. Very unpleasant features. So this octave establishes a scene or a setting. But so what? Why is this significant? We find that out in the sestet. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my work, she mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Even though the statue has fallen, there is a pedestal at the foot of what was the statue which explains it. The statue was of a powerful ruler named Ozymandias. He was king of kings. The phrase, look on my works, tells us that when this statue was erected, it was erected probably in the midst of a great city, a city that other rulers would be jealous of. When other mighty people looked at the great kingdom of Ozymandias, they would despair because they couldn't possibly hope to ever match his power and eminence. But look at line 12. Nothing beside remains. This colossal wreck 
is all by itself in the desert. There is nothing but sand as far as the eye can see. So we have some dramatic irony here. Remember from earlier podcasts that dramatic irony occurs when the speaker says something that has a significance beyond what the speaker realizes? When Ozymandias had this statue of himself erected, he could not imagine that his kingdom wouldn't last forever. He couldn't imagine that there would ever be a time when his kingdom was entirely gone. But it is, completely. So what's the point? The point is that human achievements are temporary. Power, wealth, fame are temporary things. On one level, this is something of a political poem. One of the things that power does, sometimes, is cause us to forget our place in the larger scheme of things. Power and wealth can make us think that we're more important than we really are. And that is what happened to Ozymandias.